This time on IFAF. Idaho Falls and flooding? Maybe, probably not. We just really like to find that little hidden gem. Yes. You know, I think we're just so used to having to do that with men. Every year it happens, no matter how much the media says, hey, don't. I wish more of them were pink, but you know, whatever. <laughs> That's a fun one for ho, meow, nerds. So people with cats and also houses. <laughs> <laughs> IFAF, Idaho Falls Weekly Informal Infotainment, with Mike Nelson and Carly Morgan. Coming up on this episode, another opportunity to get in that TSA pre-check. Ooh. Also, the Home and Garden Show, back and better than ever. Uh, oh, a dude busted with 56 pounds of marijuana. That's a lot. <laughs> David Archuleta leaving the church, dropping a new single. Is it a diss track? <laughs> <laughs> Kinda. Oh, okay. I, I would say kinda. And Idaho Falls Parts and Rec wants your input. So does the city of Ammon on its pool. Don't mind us just experimenting with the camera. Can you hold yours up too? Oh yeah, good idea. We got these business card, bu- finger quotes, business cards. We moved in at the exact same time. That was really cool. <laughs> oh, funny. Okay. We just want to see if they work on video. So it's got a QR code. Here, I'll that, do it really close. That we know works. Mm-hmm. And then we uh, we just want to see if we can shoot it from the video. Right. If that makes sense. If you're listening, what we're saying makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. Okay. <laughs> Experiment over. Thanks for bearing with us. So Easter was fun, sort of a coldish, wettish weekend. Which it always is here in Idaho. You know, that's why I remember as a kid, my grandma used to make me Easter outfits <laughs> and she'd always make sure that I had a jacket too. Yeah. So nine times out of 10, she'd, she'd make me one. Sometimes she'd buy me one if she saw one out there that like matched the dress that she made. But yeah. That's Easter in Idaho. Yeah. And it looks like we'll hit 60 this week and then go back down to 40. That's also springtime in Idaho. Mm-hmm. Just yep. fantastic. Well, and also I'm just happy to have those few nice days. Like, I went to the actual park the other day, and it was so nice. Mm -hmm. You know, it was a little chilly, and, like, I was there with a a friend of mine, and she was like, it's kind of cold. Like, should we go back to the car? And I was like, nah, it's fine. We can handle (laughs) it, you know? I I gave her my cardigan, and I went to my my car and grabbed a jacket and stuff. It was nice. Well, the the funeral for your grandma, Jeannie Morgan, you may mm-hmm. remember at the end of last episode, we dedicated that episode to her. She passed away. She did. The funeral yeah. was last week, mm-hmm. but it was a beautiful service. <laughs> kind of chilly. A little bit. Felt bad for the bagpiper. <laughs> yeah, my Uncle Nate. In his kilt. Mm-hmm. Who did a great job, by the way. He did uh, mm-hmm. Amazing Grace yeah. at the very end. And he walked away like, I don't know, 40 paces or whatever it was. Uh-huh. Beautiful. He's really good. He's really good. You know, he used to play for the Idaho Falls Fire Department. Okay. Yeah. Who we talked about two episodes ago? Or, or was it last episode? Was it technically the police department? Because he was he's a cop. Okay. He's a resource officer, as a matter of fact. And I know guns and hoses <laughs> don't necessarily get along all the time. In fact, we're coming up on sports ball season. They'll have a couple face-offs this year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In- yeah, you know, I I really should know which one he played for. I feel okay. a little bad that I don't. Oh, well. <laughs> but he also did Aaron Copeland's Going Home, mm-hmm. which was sad and appropriate and awesome. Yeah. You know what's funny? I didn't notice the change in song. He was so seamless. Okay. It wasn't until you said later, oh, yeah, he changed from this to that. And I was like, oh. He did? <laughs> Going home is the one that goes... Dun, 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 oh, dun, dun. It's yeah. It's usually paired with simple gifts. Mm-hmm. It's part of his, I don't know, Appalachian Spring or something. I don't, I'm not sure. I'm really showing my nerdy side here. Okay, <laughs> you are, you dork. <laughs> we'll get off of that. Yeah. And may Jeannie Morgan rest in peace, should I have said that first. Do you want to say anything about that? Do you need a hug? <laughs> a hug later would, would actually be really nice. Okay. Thank you. Um All right. Yeah, you know, uh, it's sort of funny, too, because he actually played for my grandpa on my other side of my family, and he's on my dad's side, you know, so it's kind of nice that he's willing to offer his services for so many of my family members, and it it does sort of put a nice bow on the whole thing. Yeah. It's always a bummer. Yeah. You know, funerals are sad, and they're hard, and I, you know, struggled a little bit with it, and... It's always kind of nice, too, on both sides of my family. Like, it always means that more people than you usually get to see come by, and you get to, you all get to kind of hang out and, like, 
be together and reminisce. And it's, it's really sweet. And I want to say your family is amazing. <laughs> they, though I've been to some funerals where it's just stone cold faces the whole, I shouldn't have said that the whole time. Mm-hmm. I, sh- I also shouldn't have said, because we got great seats for the funeral service. <laughs> uh, and I, I looked at Carly and I said, oh, we're dead center. <laughs> and, and then very quickly. <laughs> like, I guess don't say dead at a funeral. You don't say um, hi to a friend named Jack at an airport. Yeah, no. <laughs> and you don't say dead at a funeral. <laughs> I'm an idiot. But your family was... It was a little funny. <laughs> they. It was a celebration of life. Mm-hmm. It, even though it was in a church. Yeah. Uh, in Shelley, what uh, the the sixth? Uh, it was the Steak Center. Steak Center, okay. Mm-hmm. But um, they laughed, they cried, they told inappropriate jokes. But I saw <laughs> the bishop behind going. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. None of them were too inappropriate. But, Appa- you know. Apparently, there's something because your grandma primarily lived in a town called Milo. Milo. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. And, and apparently, there's a famous Milo wave, which let's yeah. just say involves one single finger. <laughs> And they told yeah. that story, and we were in church. It was cute. And I was busting up laughing. Yeah. So credit to your family for really, you know, they get it. I think they do, yeah. That's the kind of celebration I want. Yeah, I want no smiles at mine. I want everyone to be devastated. <laughs> <laughs> I want people to be weeping, unable to talk. <laughs> Throwing themselves on your coffin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Although I actually plan to be cremated, so that's even more Throwing like themselves on, on my uh, really. Here's the thing: I want like a cardboard box. <laughs> I, I kid you not; they actually will provide that if you don't want to pay for a coffin. Yes. So yeah, I want them to be tossing themselves into the <laughs> furnace alongside me in my cardboard box. That's my ideal funeral. You want them to join you in the afterlife? <laughs> I mean, well, I want them to be so devastated that I'm like, gone that they can't imagine life without me. Like pharaohs, you know, they yeah. uh, the pharaoh died. All their servants would get unalived as well. That's true. To serve them in the afterlife, as I understand it. Yeah, yeah. Like the ritzy ones. And sometimes they're pets too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which I would never do. Goats. Although realistically, they'll probably like die of a broken heart, like where the red fern grows. Oh, geez. Yeah. I mean, do we want to talk about old yeller too while we're at it? (laughs) Well, I mean, you know, we started this really sad. Let's just keep it going. (laughs) You know? This but but we do. We this is what we do on the show. We go from morbid and sad to Gallows humor to laughing. Yeah. And and I th- and, and I, I think that's kind of how the funeral went too. Yeah. Yeah. And then, man, boy, do Mormons know how to do a after funeral dinner. Oh, every single one of those potatoes, man. So much ham last week. And let's talk mm-hmm. about the I think this was the first time I've been to a funeral with actual funeral potatoes. Oh, yeah. Well, it, it's a Mormon funeral, so Well, but I, I my ex used to make them with scalloped potatoes. And don't know where she got that. <laughs> and and your people made them with shredded, hash browns. like hash brown yeah. shredded potatoes. Which I'm pretty sure is the classic way of making them. So good. I Well, I didn't know. Well, I've never How had How can them. I be this old? You've never, what? I've never, no, I've never had them with anything but hash brown style potatoes. Okay. I've had them plenty. They're I, one of my favorite foods. I ask for them on my birthday every year, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I'm a believer. Yeah. They're amazing. <laughs> the fun part, really, though, is like the toppings, because a lot of people will do just like, you know, shredded cheese that they broil, so it's a little bit crispy, um, but other folks will do uh, cornflakes mm-hmm. or- Or Ritz, right? Or Ritz, or sometimes my mom would do some Malay's wavy potato chips, and those ones were the best ones. They're so really? good. Okay. Yeah. I think she ran out of cornflakes one year, because that's usually what she'd do. And she was like, all right, what can I do instead? And she chose those, and she was so right. They're so good. So good. Sad to see you go, Jeannie Morgan, but thanks yeah. for the food. And thanks for the candy, too. <laughs> <laughs> Your yeah. grandma... She must have had a candy stash. So she was really well known for giving out candy. Okay. You know, because she used to be a bus driver, like almost her entire life, you know, and so she'd give the kids candy. Oh, that's a brave woman. Yeah, right? (laughs) She'd sugar up all the kids. (laughs) Well, sometimes it'd shut them up, so. Okay, right. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, so. So at the funeral, (laughs) on the table, uh, at the after funeral lunch, which was about 100 people. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's huge. I mean, she was really well loved. Yeah. You know? And the more, by the way, the more they talked about her and how resourceful and problem solving she was, the more I thought about you. Yeah, it's really cool. 
And you know what they say. I, Carly's getting misty eyed. I don't mean to harp on it. Yeah. But they put her candy stash around <laughs> on all the tables. Yeah. So we all got to have some, let's face it, a little expired candy. Oh, yeah. Well, and they and they gave a disclaimer. They're like, like, hey. Oh, yeah. They said. <laughs> she was still giving these out like not too long ago, but. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, I just, I think it's wonderful that we're remembering her. And I think that as long as you keep her in your memory. She'll never be truly gone. Yeah, like Coco. Well, like the Hales talked about, we talked about them last December. Every December 6th, they do the Christmas box angel vigil. Right. And they talked about, what's the expression about a person dies twice? Right. I'm um, not sure. So that's actually a quote by Ernest Hemingway. Okay. Um, Let me look up the exact one. because who, who, fun fact, offed himself in Ketchum, Idaho. Oof. Right, right here in our state. Yikes! Not so fun fact. I should have said. Actually, here is a fun fact, though. So you know, six six toed cats, polydactyl cats. Yes, they're actually called Ernest Hemingway cats because he had one named Snow White, and nowadays a lot of six toed cats can actually be traced back to her. Wow! Isn't that funny? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we've his, learned a lot here today already. <laughs> his quote is every man has two deaths when he is buried in the ground. And the last time someone says his name, that's it, his name in some ways, men can be immortal. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like the Batman idea or the Batman quote of you can't kill an idea. You can't. It lives on in the minds of humankind. Yeah. And I mean, that's proven true by how many different Batmans and Robins there are. So. Bet you didn't. <laughs> bet you didn't because he's an idea. Yeah. Bet you didn't think we'd be starting the show off with something so sad. So let's uh, liven it up a little bit with our follow ups. Is that okay? Yeah. Yeah. I can't. You, you know what? On? Let me grab a tissue and then yes. <laughs> okay. Better? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I totally messed up the, the vaudeville routine <laughs> last episode. Um, and so I've, I've made this prop. <laughs> I'm not Gallagher or Carrot Top or anything, but it's a bow made of paper. I can see that. And the reason I made it out of paper is to demonstrate that you can do this with a dinner napkin before the meal (laughs) comes when you're having an awkward dinner with people. So the routine takes this makeshift bow and it moves it from the head to demonstrate that you're talking like a girl, (laughs) an old timey lady, to uh, to under the nose. So it looks like a mustache. And so Uh it goes, I can't pay the rent. You must pay the rent. I can't pay the rent. You must pay the rent. I can't pay the rent. I'll pay the rent. So the hero comes in mm-hmm. with the bow tie. And he's a dapper gentleman. He's the dapper gentleman. Yeah. All Although, right. honestly, some fellows with uh, mustaches, I think, also look like very dapper gentlemen. So. Right. But we segued into that last episode by talking about snidely whip stash and uh, whip, <laughs> whiplash and the villain mustache. <laughs> oh, right. That's true. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's Which, true. Which is what made me think of it, and then I blew it. <laughs> there, great. Now I'm totally redeemed. Unlike Dan Schneider, second follow-up. <laughs> okay, we talked about Quiet on Set. Yeah. And how the, the how everything's coming out, and how just bad stuff looks in retrospect. Now, I think things will always look bad in retrospect. Mm-hmm. And then the excuses come, oh, it was a different time. We didn't know. And some people might even condemn that, but I will posit that that means we're getting better, people. Yeah. Oh, I absolutely, I I totally agree with that. But uh, I watched, no sooner had we published our show than we found out, oh, Kate Middleton has cancer and our thoughts and prayers are with her and her Mm -hmm. family. And that we found out that Dan Schneider had sort of a response video to Quiet on the Set. Now, do you remember Boogie? I guess he was the actor for Tebow in iCarly. Okay. He was the guy with dreadlocks. So he had this sort of uh, nothing. No. Okay. No idea. I don't. I didn't watch that much iCarly. Yeah. Mostly because I felt like they were bastardizing my name. (laughs) (laughs) So uh, he sat down with Dan Schneider in sort of a pod video podcast format like we do and interviewed Dan and Dan got to sort of respond to everything. And he owned a lot of the stuff. Mm hmm. But the whole time, I'm not saying this is how it was. I'm just saying this is how I felt. The whole time I was thinking, hmm, 
written and directed by Dan Schneider. Right, right. You know? well, and you know, it's so funny you say that too, because there have been a lot of memes about it kind of like that. Like, I don't know if you know of the whole Miranda Sings controversy. Uh-uh. So she, you know, the Miranda, Miranda Sings. Cosgrove? No, no, Miranda Sings. It's a YouTube oh. character. Oh. She always had like really squampus lipstick and talked funny. And mm, yeah, it might not be on your side of it's the a, internet. It's a meme I missed. Yeah. She was basically accused of grooming and like having inappropriate relationships with her fans as well. And she released this really tone deaf video where she played on a ukulele and sort of defended herself through song. Oh boy. But it was just so really kind of cringe. It was so cringe. And I've been seeing a lot of memes pop up of Dan Schneider's face on her body from the ukulele video. So it's like him holding a ukulele. And Yikes. I think it's kind of funny because I think a lot of people are sort of comparing the two and saying, hey. Right. I get it. Like saying, this is what he's doing. Right. Right. And in sort of the same vein, not a follow up, but boy, if you want to go down a rabbit hole. Apparently, P. Diddy is the new R. Kelly, Oof, and yeah. maybe Jay-Z is involved in all these allegations, and they're going to get I to mean, him next. Honestly, dude. Is if, what the internet is saying. If he could do that to Beyonce, he deserved to have been canceled so long ago. But there's <laughs> allegations of grooming and yeah. trafficking. I, okay, I'm a little sensitive this episode because I just read the YouTube rules. Right. Like what you can say and what you can't say. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you know, essay and all that. Mm -hmm. And now the camps are developing. 50 Cent and Charlemagne and Exhibit are in one, are joining forces. Like 50 Cent says he's going to release a documentary about. But if you want to. Which, like, I wasn't expecting 50 Cent to be the hero of it all, but I'm here for it. But here we are. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure what really happened. And I really am sort of uh, innocent. Until, I mean, let's not forget that mm -hmm. anyone can be accused of anything at any time. And right. we rely on due process. We do. Where it's the presumption of innocence, mm -hmm. where it's innocent until proven guilty. Uh, not necessarily in the court of public opinion, I get it, but let's remember that our entire judicial system is based on that, and if it weren't, you know what we'd have again? Mm -hmm. The Salem Witch Trials. Right, right. So, well, and I mean, not only that, but that also goes into our jury selection. Mm -hmm. You know, like, m so much of the time, they will actively choose not to include anyone who's even heard of what's going on, because they don't want people to be biased. You know, and again, kind of like I was saying with the Lori Vallow lawyer thing, like we have to stick to due process and we have to have good defense, right. even on the side of the bad guy, even when we all know. That don't, don't be like hating on the attorneys. Right. Because realistically, they're that, doing a very important part of the job. Exactly. And that job guarantees that a guilty person goes to jail and stays in jail. Right. You know? Right. You don't want a mistrial. Exactly. Yeah. You don't want them to get away because of a technicality, you know? So I definitely agree with you. I think that we do need to be, you know, open-minded and we need to be thoughtful about our responses and stuff. And also you're right. Like court of public opinion has sort of already, you know, labeled these people guilty. Right. And there probably is, a, there's probably enough evidence to say so. If you want to go. I'm saying is look at the evidence first. Yeah, well said. If you want to go down the rabbit hole, all you got to do is type in P. Diddy mm -hmm. into, I, or I'm sure any one of his other nicknames, Puff, Puffy, mm -hmm. Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Diddy, Sean Combs, into <laughs> your Facebook watch. And then you won't get any other videos other than that for the rest of the day. Right, <laughs> like, right. Speaking from experience, I had it on for two hours in the background while before I realized what the heck was going on. Mm-hmm. And I mean, really, it does just come down to be a smart person, look at the evidence first, don't just go with the crowd, you know? And realistically, most people want to be on the right side of history. Most people will probably agree that the evidence is enough, if there is enough evidence. Last follow-up about Easter and Easter egg hunts. <laughs> Boy, uh, it's so fun to see the kids race for the Easter eggs, right? Isn't oh, yeah. it? yeah. Typically, group or community Easter egg hunts, like the one at Snake River Landing or the one in Rigby, are separated by age category. As they should be. Because you don't want a four-year-old fighting a 12-year-old right. for a plastic egg yeah. with a Hershey's kiss inside it. <laughs> right? Right. Me, personally, I would stay home and go buy a bag of candy from Costco or Sam's and say, here you go, kids. Mm -hmm. Or what? I mean, I, you know, I would hide them, too. 
Yeah. But if they wanted. You know, I like what Bob and Linda do on Bob's Burgers. Where they do an Easter egg hunt around the house, but they do different eggs for mom and dad, and whoever has the last egg found wins. Okay. I think that's super fun, and it's kind of nice, because then the adults get to sort of compete, too. Second Bob's Burger reference in two episodes. All right. Bob's Burgers rocks. Can we go for three? (laughs) But what typically happens on the Easter egg hunts for kids under four, Mm -hmm. even though the signs clearly say, kids under four, Mm -hmm. kids only, no adults. Right. The, the minute that starter pistol fires or the bell rings or however they start it, one, two, three, go. Mm-hmm. In these community Easter egg hunts, uh, you see, for the first one or two or maybe even three, if you're lucky, seconds, it's just the cute little toddlers looking for Easter eggs. And then one parent decides to help. One parent. <sighs> Guess what happens after that? It's like it the broken window theory. To, exactly. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. The broken window theory simply uh, theorizes that a house, a vacant home can remain undisturbed in any neighborhood, in any city, in any Mm -hmm. country for years. But once one person throws a rock at one of the windows, it gets vandalized further almost immediately. Right. Until it's, you know, spray painted with graffiti and we up in the hood. Right. Until it's like this derelict home that <laughs> right, you might as well torch it. Spooky. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, which, which is sad, but it's like the broken window theory. So suddenly it becomes an Easter egg hunt for parents, right. for parents of four year old kids. Every year it happens, no matter how much the media says, "Hey, don't," or how much the, how mm-hmm. how much the the officiators of the event say, "Okay, parents, please don't do this." And I bet if you asked every single parent individually, you're not going to help, right? No. You're not going to help, right? Mm-hmm. You're not, and went around to the 200 parents. Right. It, the same thing would still happen mm-hmm. because there's some sort of parental panic mode. We we got up, we got dressed for this, we drove here, we've been talking about it. My kids have been looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. I promised them a good time, and then the whole premise of the thing you showed up for is completely destroyed within seconds. And I think it's sad. And and I'm just an old man talking to the breeze at this point. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to change anything. <laughs> it's not going to change. The tides will come and go. Mm-hmm. The sun will rise and set. Yeah. And parents of four-year-old and under kids will panic and try to help them. Oh, I think it's cute. We're helping them. Mm-hmm. No, it's not cute. No. You You're know there what? for a thing that is specifically a thing, and you made it not the thing. No, it's so much cuter okay. to watch them stupidly walk <laughs> over eggs that they should have seen, because they're dumb, and they're babies, and their little baby brains are are not d- developed yet, you know? Mm-hmm. And honestly, it's just cuter. Really, if we would all just admit and like resign ourselves to being like, you know what? It's okay if my kid doesn't win. I want it to be cute. It'd be so much cuter. Where is and, there where is there a grassy area with a gate or a corral around it? So right. kids can get through, but parents can't. That's I love what that we idea. Need. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like they only have kid size holes. Yeah. You know, only the, the kids and the really, really skinny moms can get in. You, <laughs> <laughs> you must be this short yeah. to enter. Yeah, I love it. And you know what? I have a solution for this too. Mm-hmm. If you're a parent and you're worried about your kid losing at something like this, and you're worried that they're not going to find a single egg, and you're you're just so terrified of what that'll do for their self, their self esteem, or they'll cry, or you don't want to deal with the tears later, any of those reasons are valid. You go to the dollar store. All you do no, is you keep some eggs in your pocket. There. And you then go. when they come up to you later, you preload with a secret stash. Right. When they come up to or you post-load. later. Yeah, well, yeah, when when they come up to you later and they're crying, you very quickly and sneakily, because they're babies, they won't notice, they're stupid, it's fine. <laughs> but you very quickly and sneakily take an egg out of your pocket, toss it at their feet and go, oh, Sydney, look, you did find an egg, it's right there. Yeah. And then while they're picking up that egg, you do the same thing right behind them. Oh my goodness, there's another one. That's all you got to do. Well, yeah, while they're bending down to pick up the first egg, yeah. you drop the second one. Yeah, you basically... <laughs> 15 times. Yeah, yeah. You know what? They'd even be happy with like five or six eggs. I guarantee it, you know? So genuinely, if that happens, if you go and you do want to help your kiddo, and I get it, you know, I really get that like parental instinct to I protect get it your baby. Too. I'm not condemning... But like, that's your solution, babe. Yeah. You know? 
So have a plan B. Yeah. Great idea. Carly Morgan, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> solving all the world's problems. So we had this sort of El Nino winter and we're, I think, a little worried about the farmers and then got like a foot of snow a couple weeks ago. Remember <laughs> right. that? Yeah. And they said, okay, great. Our snowpack is at or above 100% of average. Now we're hearing that we almost have too much water or oh, really? snow on them, their hills. Mm -hmm. And we might actually get some flooding. Oh, wow. Huh. Which is always exciting. Yeah, I hope you don't live in a flood a uh, floodplain. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, check with your local county courthouse or your local realtor mm -hmm. uh, to find out if you live in a floodplain or not, because uh, that could happen. Now, I've we've seen the Snake River get pretty high right. since nineteen seven. The Teton Dam burst in nineteen seventy six. I want to say, and there are. If, I'll just trust you on that. Yeah, you can go. It's right before my family moved here. But the housing prices were so low because yeah, they were like, I don't want to deal with that. I'm, I'm moving away. <laughs> pretty devastating. And it hasn't been high since, but we've gotten really close a couple times where you go down to, still mm -hmm. going to call it the West Bank, mm -hmm. and the water is coming right up to the grass. Right, right. Yeah, like where you're thinking, oh boy, another week of this and we're going to have to start sandbagging. Mm -hmm. But um, hasn't happened yet, might not happen, just a small little concern you know, nothing as big as, say, the fact that we're living on top of a Yellowstone caldera super volcano or anything like <laughs> right, that. Right, right. Yeah, so no use in panicking about but, it. But, you know, honestly, out of all of the natural disasters, I think that's the one that I'd want to live with. You know, because, like, tornadoes, terrifying. And they could just pick you up, whip you around, throw you a mile away, and you could still have to live through that. And it'd be terrible, you know? Kind of like what I've said with the apocalypse. I am... I'm too soft. I can't do an apocalypse. <laughs> if it happened, I would just take care of myself and be done. But but you're right. You know? <laughs> with, at least with flooding, you've got enough notice to uh, drive all the way up Lincoln onto the Bone Road and take that road up here about <laughs> well, five mile and get and, high and ground. And that's the thing. Even So I wasn't even talking about the flooding. I was talking about the super volcano. Right. right. I'm saying with flooding, right. at least you get some notice. Right. Exactly. Right. Exactly. There's that too. Um, but you know, there's- And with Earth super volcano, you're right. gone immediately. Right. Same- <laughs> Yes, that's exactly what I'm getting at. Because, you know, tornadoes or earthquakes or something like that, something terrible and devastating can happen to you, and you're still supposed to, like, just work through it, figure it out, you know? And yet, at least this way, it's just done. You don't have to worry about it. Right. You've heard the, uh, there's a famous quote by a bomb technician, bomb diffuser guy, uh, where they said, how can you, you know, do a job that's so stressful? And he's like, oh, it's really easy. Mm -hmm. I go and do my job. And either I am successful or mm -hmm. suddenly it's not my problem anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly. And that's exactly how I look at it. Like, uh, yeah, at least if it does happen, it won't be my problem. <laughs> While we're on spring, an event we didn't mention last week, coming up April 19th through the 20th, the Home and Garden Show. It's back and bigger than ever at the Mountain America Center. That's a, that's a fun one for ho, meow, nerds. So people with cats and also houses. <laughs> <laughs> you can't spell homeowner without meow. <laughs> That's cute. But no, I think any homeowner would be happy to go there, even if they're dog people. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah. yeah. Dog so people are welcome too. Yeah. Yeah. So long as you want to add a little beauty to your living space, I think it's a great little event. Oh, yeah. They have like spas and. Ooh, fancy. Stuff. Why how come spas is the only thing I can remember from that? Uh -huh. I would do live broadcasts from there every single year. Mm -hmm. And now I can't remember a blessed <laughs> thing that's there. But, you know, stuff for your lawn. Yeah. Probably some nice gazebos. Yes. Yeah. I'm sure of that. Which, honestly, like, that's one thing I really want. I want a nice gazebo someday. Yeah, yeah. I want to be indoors and out of doors at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> you know that? And also a sauna would be pretty baller. I mean, a sauna in a gazebo is the ultimate with a nice little there you go. pergola. Yeah. Is I mean, was... while we're at it, let's just say like a hot tub somewhere on there too. And if you care, there's another TSA pre-check enrollment happening at the Idaho Falls Airport, April 22nd through the 26th. Oh, nice. Maybe we should go. So you can, yeah, scream through the line and everybody else will be jealous of you. Yeah. Not just at this airport, but at other airports. Because at this airport, it doesn't really matter. Right. But at other airports, it sure does. Mm -hmm. When you're in a hurry to make your flight after a week-long vacation. Right. And you don't even want to go home to begin with. Man, there was one time we... <laughs> Uh, so it was me and my ex-husband, my ex-Ken, uh, we were <laughs> heading home from L.A., 
and we had to catch our flight. But, you know, L.A. traffic had to slow down so much. We left on time, but we did not get there a few hours early like we planned. We got there 20 minutes before our flight was supposed to board. Oof. Yeah, yeah. And Okay, so, 20 minutes before boarding is still better than 20 minutes before takeoff. It was actually pretty good. Uh, yeah. Okay. But we got there like... Barely that, with any time at the LA airport. Yeah, that's still a pant fest when you're finally yeah. at your gate. <laughs> yeah. No, we we genuinely went to the security line and, you know, it was really, really long. And we just talked to some folks and we're like, look, our flight is leaving in like 20 minutes. Would you please let us cut you? And they're like, yeah, it's fine. I'm like hours early. Thank you so much. And we just did that as far up the line as we could go. We got there on time. What what you should have done is just walked straight up to the security guard and said, please, the people we love are getting on a plane and we have to stop them. <laughs> like in a Hallmark movie. Uh, I feel like that sounds kind of like a threat, though. Like, that sounds <laughs> like you know that plane's going down. <laughs> you know? I didn't think of it that way. but <laughs> I mean, I think that they would definitely take action pretty quickly if you did it. Yeah. <laughs> Just right. they they probably wouldn't Perhaps leave you anywhere near the plane. Not the desired action. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have a feeling about that flight. <laughs> okay, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Come with us. <laughs> Next up, a seventy seven year old man. He's a pot pioneer named Dana Beal. Busted for Well seventy seven, I'd agree. <laughs> yeah. He's an old hippie from the in fact he's he's been advocating for national weed. You know, uh, legalization. I think for six decades, his bio says. Wow. Um, so he's I love no, that he was a teenager when this happened. Right. He's no stranger <laughs> to this. Yeah. Um, he got busted with fifty-six pounds of pot in Idaho. That's so much. <laughs> it's so much, and I guess he, you know, lives in New York, where it is legal, right? I think complete. Here's the map updated as of March first from DISA which is a screening company. It's a weed legalization map. You'll notice that it's fully illegal in only four states now, mm -hmm. Idaho, Wyoming, Kansas, and South Carolina. By the way, important disclaimer, this map is not legal advice or opinion. Ah. Okay. That's fair. Anyway, he, he was busted in Idaho, and now he's got sort of a new purpose in life because, mm -hmm. you know, if he gets convicted and sentenced, that's going to be a 50, it could be up to a 15-year sentence. Right. Which means... Well, and at 70, that's... At 77? Yeah. That means he's going to spend the rest of his life in jail or prison mm -hmm. unless he lives past the age of 92. Which is a long time. <laughs> right. Long time. So his so he, so he now has sort of uh, some skin in the game, let's yeah, say. Yeah. And so he's going to try to advocate to get Idaho to legalize it. And all I have to say is good luck, buddy. Yeah. And I'm I not, mean, realistically, though, out of all the people that are going to do it, he might be the one. He might have a shot. You know? And, and I'm not going to get on a soapbox because really, I don't care. I'm not interested whether or not it becomes legalized in Idaho. Yeah, it doesn't really affect you or me. It doesn't. But it'll be interesting, won't mm -hmm. it? Well, okay, but we do kind of have some skin in the game considering we are taxpayers. Like, that just seems like such a waste of resources. And I, especially at 77, like, he's going to have a lot of medical issues yeah. that are going to need to be addressed that are going to get paid on the taxpayer's dime, which I'm not necessarily opposed to because I do want people to get the medical care that they need, but also... Okay, I was thinking you were going the other way, seeing how much money, like, say, Colorado was one of the first states to legalize mm -hmm. it. What a surprise. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, Birkenstock wearing hippies. <laughs> Kidding, love Colorado. But they um but they make a lot of money for mm -hmm. a lot of great things by taxing and I think heavily taxing mm -hmm. weed. Yeah, kind of like what we do with cigarettes. Right. You and know? lottery tickets. Yeah. And all that all the vices. Yeah. And honestly, I completely agree with it. It, realistically, like no one, well, actually that's not totally true. I was going to say no one needs weed, but there are actually people who medically do need marijuana. So Utah, medical marijuana. Right. Is well, legal. And that's the other thing too. Like it would save us so much money on pharmaceuticals. It would save people money on their medical care. Like there are so many times when weed would be so helpful for individuals and honestly us as a state. And realistically, yeah, if we could just tax the crap out of it, dude, maybe our schools wouldn't suck so bad. Like not, not to crap on Idaho schools because I know that there are lots of really great people. We're who not work in the there, top but... ten. No, we're not. Yeah, we're... I mean, teachers will tell you that. It's... Well, and not only that, but we are almost completely surrounded by fully legal states. Yeah, well, except for Utah, which is medical, right. and Wyoming, which is with us, fully yeah. illegal. Yeah. One of again four states. I believe it's still going to happen, 
and I believe it's going to happen soon. I also understand why the United States of America works. Right. You go somewhere that has the values that you want, Mm -hmm. and then, you know, um, federal law takes care of the general stuff. Right, right. So, we'll see. Mm -hmm. Dana says, what's his quote? My legal strategy now hinges on me helping to legalize marijuana in Idaho. Yeah, well... Mm -hmm. I do wish him good luck. Yeah. Because I, I think that with the way things are now, to your point about it, we're surrounded by <laughs> heathens where <laughs> weed is legal. Um, I think that it would be a darn shame right. to see a guy spend the rest of his life in jail for something that's legal 100 miles that way. Well, and I mean, at this point, dude, like, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. He's 77. Like, are you really going to rehabilitate this guy? Yeah. It just seems a little... Pointless. Well, and my question is, this could be the dumbest question you've ever heard me ask on this show. Don't people who are just driving through where it's legal in their state and it's legal where they bought it, don't they get a pass? No, they don't because reasons, but... Okay, but like, because of reasons. But, but the re- Okay, but the question is, shouldn't they get a pass? Right. If you can legally prove that you don't reside in Idaho and you're just trying to get home... You know all those weird old laws that they put on the books just for fun? Like you can't right. shoot a deer from the back of a moving giraffe or something? Yeah, yeah. In Idaho? Yeah, or the one that you went to jail for, you can't cuss in front of women. Uh, if you yeah, missed but the they really don't prosecute How I it. Ended Up in Jail mm-hmm. when I was 17 episode, you can go back and get the whole story, whatever. It's right. ridiculous. <laughs> and it was my mom in our own home mm-hmm. that I, uh, I said fudge yeah. in front of. Only it wasn't fudge. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the funniest part is, I feel like out of all of the, like, really good cussers I know, they're all women. Uh, yeah. You know? You certainly uh, can, you're certainly right there on par, if not. If I need to string together some <laughs> profanity, I sure can. You certainly can, like a lovely <laughs> pearl necklace. Yeah. Speaking of Idaho, which we do on this show, um, I saw an interesting stat this week. Idaho's mm-hmm. population growth is slowing down. Interesting. You are really into numbers this week, aren't you? I guess so. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Idaho's 44 counties saw 1.3% population growth, a more modest growth rate mm-hmm. compared to 1.8% in 2022. Right. And 3% in July of 2021. Right. When I feel like everybody was moving here after COVID. Right. The world went crazy. Mm-hmm. People discovered they could work from home. And they're like, where do we want to go? Someplace chill. Yeah. Well, someplace chill, someplace that's- But not too chill. Right. Can't smoke weed. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's <laughs> chill and it's also, you know, people sort of looked around and said, okay, well, if I can work from home, why don't I move somewhere that has a better cost of living, where I can have more land to myself? I don't have to be right stacked on top of folks. Quality of life. Yeah. Well, and speaking of sort of the quality of life of small towns, I think that this is sort of a nice little transition to your t-shirt there. Yes, it is. Thank you, Carly Morgan. (laughs) Yeah. So this week's t-shirt is available at tetontshirts.com. It celebrates South Tourist Park in (laughs) Idaho Falls. Yeah. You may recognize this sign. Uh It says Idaho Falls Uh in a certain sort of Western style font on a wooden sign. Well, and what a great shade of green that you've chosen for this one, too. Yeah. I think it's very on theme for the specific um, look that you're going for. It's a primary color. Uh Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anyway, South Tourist Park, South, this, you might as well call it South Park, Uh is in Idaho Falls, right around the intersection of Sunnyside and Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. So if you like South Parks as much as I do, (laughs) you might like this t shirt too, (laughs) tetontshirts.com. Certainly not representative of anything else that I'm aware of. Oh, no, no, nothing, nothing I can think of. Also worth a mention, remember we've talked about how Idaho Falls is repositioning itself from a gateway to Mm -hmm. adventure to a destination location. Right, which I think we are. Yeah, I think we are too. So they've changed the name of their little tourist center to the Visit Idaho Falls Experience. And along with that... Mm -hmm. This is the one located on River Parkway, uh-huh. right across from the soon-to-be Old Water Tower bench. Uh-huh. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Anyway. The water tower is soon to be the Old Water Tower. The bench will still be there, but it'll yes. represent the Old Water Tower. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> As part of the Art You Can Sit On project yeah. that we have that's really cool. Mm-hmm. They're gutting the building, 
and they're going to open it on April 12th. Oh, wow. Okay. Which is coming up next week, so that'll be exciting. Nice. I didn't realize they were doing such a big transformation. That sounds fun. There was a fireplace in there that they're knocking out that they showed pictures of. Oh, wow. So that'll be cool, just in time for tourist season mm-hmm. 2024. Nice. Have you heard this about Ozempic? That's the hot weight loss drug. Right. With mm-hmm. the jingle, oh, 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 Ozempic. Yeah. That's yeah. magic. Yeah, I know the what one. What song is that by? I don't remember who it's by, but I remember I don't either, and I don't song. care. They were yeah. a one-hit wonder, I think. Anyway, <laughs> come to find out. They're charging about $1,000 for it in the United States. For Ozempic? For a monthly supply. Well, and that's the thing. It's not really just for weight loss. There are people who also use it to manage their diabetes. Yes, which can be, can be, it's uh-huh. not always, a life-threatening condition. Right. And so maybe it needs to be regulated like insulin. I don't know. I mean, I kind of think so. If people could literally die if they don't get it, and realistically, even if you do just want to lose weight, like if it is purely cosmetic, there has to be a cap. Oh, there's a, well, there's a ton of studies that show that, uh, you know, I don't know. Every pound you have, every pound that you are overweight puts a undue amount of stress on your body and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. Come to find out, it only costs about five dollars to produce a month's supply of this stuff. So now they're under fire. Mm-hmm. And here's what gets me even angrier. I mean, he might as well be. Uh, what's that, Martin Shrekel? Uh, I know the guy. The, don't uh, remember his name, but yeah, yeah. that guy. The guy yeah. that took took the AIDS medication and like. Mm-hmm. Up the price by 2,000% or whatever. Yeah, Shrekly. for no good reason. Anyway, um, Ozempic costs $5 a month to produce. They're selling it for $1,000 for a month's supply. So they're coming under fire because they're selling it at other countries for about 155 bucks a month. Wow. But here in America, something's wrong with our system. Something yeah. is severely broken. Well, it's because... I love capitalism. Right. But this is ridiculous. But they have no incentive to actually help people. They only have an incentive to make money. Right. And that's so that's so different if your product is purely recreational and you don't need it and you'll be fine without it. Like, realistically, a Fendi bag, uh, anything Chanel, that sort of thing. Sure. Sure. Charge, charge $6,000 for a bag. Sure. No one will die without it. Yeah. Okay. Something like this. I mean, even if it's not dying, even if it's just quality of life, even if someone gets to just feel better about themselves because they have your product and there's not really any other way that they can do it. Because people have adverse reactions to medications all the time. Sometimes there's only one that works for you. And I get it. There's so much that has to happen before a drug hits the market. Oh, I know that very well. I used to work in clinical trials. Yeah. And, you know, know, I think every pharmaceutical company's dream is, oh, we're going to make millions or billions Mm -hmm. or trillions. And do you need to? Can you just make millions instead of billions? Right. To help the American public? Yeah. Remember, I think it was Jonas Salk who gave away the polio vaccine for free Mm -hmm. because he really cared about the health of people. Right. Don't see a lot of that these days. No, you really don't. And it's such a shame, you know? I understand having to charge more than what it actually costs to produce, maybe even significantly more. But realistically, even if they were charging 500 versus 1,000, that's still a way better look, dude. Yeah. I think they should change their jingle to, oh, oh, overpriced drug. You know. (laughs) Right. Sorry, I'm not on key today. Well, and also, I think part of it is that the U.S. allows drug ads on TV. Yeah. And those cost good money. Oh, yeah. You know, realistically, I think even if we just cut that and we said, sorry, you're not allowed to advertise your your medication that not everyone needs to everyone. Because that seems obvious to me. I don't know. Um, But even if they had to cut out just their advertising budget they'd probably be able to knock down the price of their product and still make the exact same amount of money. But then how will people hear about it? I mean, uh, I can I hear- I don't know, through their doctors. <laughs> right. I can hear arguments on both sides. <laughs> the people who actually should be recommending a medication to someone. Right. There's a family guy clip like, well, have you considered taking this drug because it was recommended to me by a hot pharmaceutical chick who travels around in a suitcase? Or, or with a suitcase? Shit, I mean, I yeah, it. it's but, true, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Two cities asking the public for feedback on what they should do next. Let's start with Ammon. Mm-hmm. City of Ammon presented the results of its first survey in a pool feasibility study. Now, I know a lot of people love the Ammon pool. Right. And to be kind, the old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. Yeah. Getting a little long in the tooth. 
And they've known this for years. Well, and also our population has just grown a lot, too. It is. So they want to put in a new pool. Mm -hmm. They've done a feasibility study. I guess they're going to do another one. And in the meantime, they want your feedback. My feedback? Yes, your feedback. (laughs) Your feedback? Your feedback. (laughs) (laughs) My feedback? Yes. uh, Okay, whatever. (laughs) Visual joke. Sorry, listeners. Okay. They uh, have three options. Are you ready for this? Option number one, a 15 million six-lane outdoor pool. Six Sounds lanes great. is pretty decent, yeah. Option two, a 20 million indoor eight-lane lap pool with 150 spectator seats. I kind of think indoor is the way to go in Idaho. I do too. Option three, $33 million, mm-hmm. an indoor eight-lane lap pool with the 250 spectator seats. Wow, that's tough. What about the outdoor splash pad? Are they still going to have that? I mean, I feel like they should. You know... I wonder if they need the spectator seats. I'm sure our (laughs) bean counters could tell us, but why adding 100 additional spectator seats adds another $13 million? I don't get Mm, that part. I mean, those, depending on the type of seating, they can be expensive. And realistically, it's probably more to do with the space that you have to add to it. And then it'll be about three years before we actually get it. Right. A year for planning and two years for construction. Now, that being said, as someone who's a little shy, I want more pool, less seating. Yes. Okay. Yeah. (laughs) You know. More pool, less spectating me in the pool. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Right. Do we have a place that's great for spectating while someone is swimming? Maybe not. But maybe that's not a bad thing. You know? (laughs) Well, you know, especially because we are growing in population. We're going to need the more pool area, you know, and... I even kind of like what they've got going on at the Apple where they've got like the Olympic pool and then the little warm pool and then the outside pool and the splash pad and stuff. I mean, I think that's a good setup. Okay. Yeah. You know, and at the end of the day, really, I just like don't want to have happen to me what happened at the Apple. Oh, yeah. Where it's a three lane pool and some guy was like, I'll just fit in I'm going to make it a four lane pool. Yeah. (laughs) Screw you guys. Yeah. (laughs) That was last episode, right? (sighs) Yes. Okay. Yeah. Made me so mad. (laughs) The city of Idaho Falls is also asking for your input if you live in Idaho Falls for mm. playground equipment at South Capitol Park. Hey, another South Park. <laughs> another South Park. I bet there are lots of friendly faces. Yes, there are. Mm-hmm. Humble folks without temptation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All that. Yeah. Might go down there. Yeah, we should go. Have myself a time. <laughs> okay. City of Idaho Falls Parks and Rec Department wants your input on which playground sets to bring to the city. Lincoln Post. Now, one of the ones... So, yeah. I actually have had kind of a lot of experience with playgrounds lately, because I've been helping out with a couple of different kids. That's and right, like, yeah. Yeah. One fun, free thing to do is go to the park. Even when it's a little cold, most kids are pretty stoked to do that. Oh, they love that. that. Yeah, they're crazy. And I've realized that there are a couple of things that I really like to see at a park. Recently, have you ever seen those spinny cups? Um, Like teacups at Disneyland? What? So, it's sort of the, like reaction to the fact that merry-go-rounds like the kind that you'd push and you'd jump on are not super safe and also just like don't last very long because people break them all the time but basically there are these little individual cups that you can plant your butt in and they're tilted a little so that you'll spin around really okay, fast yeah, like, like spinny a chair tilt and hurl yeah <laughs> I, I cannot do that stuff anymore <laughs> no right <laughs> <laughs> right but anyway um those are always super fun kids love them I love them, even as an adult. They're just a good time, you know? So that's something that I like to see on a playground. And I also really like those little mini rock walls. I think they're super fun. And every kid, every kid I've ever seen and know loves to climb. So it's sort of a great way to get that out in a, like, You'll break your neck, way. kid. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. But Well, yeah, and usually so, they're only, like, six feet tall. They're not that tall. Well, Carly Morgan, your vote counts. <laughs> you head on True. over to this link in this post here and... <laughs> Vote for your favorite. They're colorful. Mm-hmm. They're customizable. Go check I mean, them out. I wish more of them were pink, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> One of our comments on a YouTube video a couple of weeks ago was, does Carly live in a Pepto-Bismol bottle? <laughs> I wish. And I said, yes. Yes, she does. <laughs> so we've actually saved the biggest news, the hugest news for last. I, I'm mostly kidding because it's big news in two places. Mm-hmm. Idaho Falls, Idaho and Salt Lake City, Utah. Yeah. David Archuleta has a brand new single he just dropped called Held Together, 
which basically says, I read the lyrics, I listened to the song. It's not Wait, a bad song. Held together or hell together? Hell together. Okay, cool. And I think the lyrics are, if paradise is pressure, then we'll go to hell together. Which is quite the I dig it. quite the reversal. Yeah. From I mean, I remember we hosted a thing at Deseret Book in Rexburg. Mm-hmm. For like his new CD. Oh, I mean, I remember when he came to the Civic and I was like, oh, David Archuleta's coming. I wish I could go. I couldn't for some reason, but. So he came out in 2021, came oh. out as gay. Did I you feel hear like that? I, yeah, I feel like I should have heard about that. Totally missed not. that. <laughs> Funny. And I guess he left the church in November of last year, 2023. Mm-hmm. Did you hear that? Nope. I didn't hear that either. But now we're hearing about it because he's dro- he's dropped this new single. Which also, I feel like he'd be a really fun guest star for Has Been Hotel. <laughs> oh, he might. <laughs> Just yeah. saying. Especially I mean, if with he's, a song like that. If he's singing about hell, yeah. that, that would that would be a perfect crossover. <laughs> yeah. Well, and as someone who loves Has Been, I'm really excited to hear this single. And he's not the first singer who's done this. There was Tyler from Neon Trees, Dan mm-hmm. from Imagine Dragons. Mm-hmm. I believe they're leaving the church because of the church's stance on LGBTQ plus issues. Right, right. So, and I guess his mom left the church around the same time. I don't know if it was before or after in mm-hmm. support of David. I'm not sure. Well, and she probably knew before the general public knew anyway. Uh, mom knows her kids. Yeah. 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 Well, and realistically, I wonder if it's not impossible that the church will change its stance within the next few years. And I got to tell you, it was kind of funny. I said, hey, Siri, play David Archuleta Hell Together, mm-hmm. it played that. And you know, now when you ask Alexa, and I think you can change this in your settings. Now when you ask Alexa or Siri to play a song, what they do to keep you engaged longer is mm-hmm. to build a playlist and continue playing songs based on the first right. song you played. Uh-huh. So after David Archuleta came a, a number by Paul Cardall. Now, if you've ever been into a Deseret book or listened to um, Sunday music programming, you've probably heard that name. Mm -hmm. He is a prominent LDS musician. Uh And so it's like, oh, sorry, Apple Music didn't get the memo that those two are no longer related. (laughs) How unfortunate. Yeah. Well, and honestly, I would put David Archuleta in like, not necessarily an LDS camp, because I feel like he was... Big enough. Maybe like a Kelly Clarkson camp. He did. Yeah. He did have some early 2000s contemporary pop hits. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And I guess uh, he's pissed off a few LDS people because he did what they call a cringeworthy I'm an ex-Mormon video. Right. Where you state, I'm a this. I'm a person over 40 Mm -hmm. and I take ibuprofen for breakfast. (laughs) I'm an ex-Mormon and I, whatever he said, (laughs) he said like a string of, I don't know, uh-huh. five to 10 things. And they didn't really like that, hmm. but it's, uh, it's interesting. Well, you know, it, it's sort of funny to see this. I'm an ex Mormon campaign after the whole, I'm a Mormon campaign. Because right. He, and he was famously, he did that a figurehead one. on that. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, and I remember Brandon flowers from the killers, one of my favorite bands, uh, doing a bit for that. And they showed it to me in seminary. And I was like, oh, this is just another reason to love the killer so much. (laughs) Well, yeah. I I mean, I will say that with any organization or group of people, Mm -hmm. LDS people love to have celebrities in their camp. Right. I mean, I still hear about Steve Young. Did you know he's a Mormon? Right. Well, and also look at Scientology. They love having celebrities in their camp, too. I think Tom Cruise, John Travolta. I think every religion, especially one that maybe people don't always take as seriously, likes to have some prominent figures in their camp to, you know, sort of humanize them. I wonder if we could do an Adam Sandler Hanukkah song (laughs) ripoff. We've got, we've got a few months to put it together. I dig that. (laughs) That's hilarious. Right. But with LDS celebrities. That's funny. Oh, and a shout out this week to a place I go, I don't know, fairly frequently Mm -hmm. once a month. I've got a standing Friday morning coffee uh, meeting with a buddy of mine. Oh, cute. Well, But I have to say, I told him right at the beginning, hey, I don't do very well with standing appointments. Can we make it a weekly thing? Mm -hmm. And then if any reason comes along whatsoever, uh, like not feeling it today Mm -hmm. or too much snow on the ground or I've got a Zoom meeting. Yeah. If any reason comes along, is it cool if we don't? Or, or he, he likes to go RVing a lot. Got a brand new RV. Oh, good for him. Right. So, so it ends up being about once a month. Yeah. Which I love. And, uh, and every Thursday or Friday morning, I'm like, Hey, are we on today or nah? 
Right. It's it's a real casual thing, and I love it. And we usually meet at Greenhouse Coffee. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize they're a uh, part of or a ministry of Water Springs Church. Yes. And I yeah. finally put that together. And right next door to them, they have a thrift mm-hmm. store. They do. Yeah, which I've been in, and mm-hmm. I know you love to go thrifting. I do, I do. You know, it's kind of like chicks loving antiquing, mm-hmm. you know? It's just, it's, you know, I think what it is, is that we just really like to find that little hidden gem. Yes. You know, I think we're just so used to having to do that with men, you know, <laughs> that we're like, it's sort of a game now, Yeah. you know? <laughs> well, you do have hunter-gatherer built into your right. DNA yeah. from thousands of years ago. But one thing Greenhouse Coffee does, and I don't know if we should say it or not, I think we're gonna, we're gonna, Right. is they have a blessing board Mm -hmm. where if you're feeling extra generous one day, you can put a coffee up on the board or a breakfast burrito up on the board. Right. So basically you pay for it and then someone else can come in and claim it. Yeah. You know, I've actually seen that a couple of different places just on the internet. People are talking like about diners that will do that so that, you know, local homeless folks or people who are just down on their luck can go in and claim them. And I, I think I it's, think it's cool. a really sweet thing to do. If you're having a down day, you can go and claim one of these things off the blessing board. And I just think that's super cool. Yeah, I think so too. And that's why Greenhouse Coffee, you are IFAF this week. Chris, Chris Pie 5, five. 21 Finger Gun Pew Salute, pew. and Chef's Kiss. To you. They have a nice quiche too. Ooh, I do love a good quiche. It's bussin', no cap, for you real, know what? for real. I haven't been in there yet. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah, I love it. The, I finally got my coffee order down there. Uh-huh. It's 30% regular drip, 30% decaf, Ooh. and 30% almond milk, and it's just perfect. That sounds nice. <laughs> now, that being said, are they open on Sundays? I don't think so. <laughs> That's fair. They, they that, go to church. And Chick-fil-A? Can't yeah. get your fix. Sorry. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's our show. We want to leave you with this. It's cool. And it's got that uncanny valley feeling to it. (laughs) Right, right. Now, you introduced me to that phrase. I did. Yeah, so basically the idea of uncanny valley is it's almost right, but not quite. Yeah. It's one of the reasons that people are like scared of dolls, because they don't quite look human, but they don't look inhuman enough to be cute. Yeah, a perfect description. Yeah. So I saw uh, what I believe to be a video of the falls this week, mm-hmm. and then I realized quickly, oh no, that's not quite it. Yeah, right. And right. I had to do some digging. It's from a it's from a game, American Truck Simulator. They just recently released the Idaho DLC expansion <laughs> pack thing. Funny, that's cool. You can drive around in a truck. So look at the falls. Mm-hmm. There's the West Bank. Barely see the temple there. It's almost like they drove around with Google Street View and then built the game according to mm-hmm. that. Well, and it's sort of neat that you say that, too, because I noticed that they sort of condensed some places together. Yes. Like, um, you see the building that the Celt's in, but across the street from that, on both sides, it's not quite the right building. I think they're... It ain't the pie. Yeah. It ain't Melaleuca. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're into that sort of thing, American Truck Simulator is the name of the game. I tried to find the best clips on the internet. No one playing the game is really from Idaho Falls, I don't think. Uh So they don't focus on the cool stuff. Right, right. You know, maybe we need to change that. Maybe we need to buy it and we need to... Yeah, it's like 60 (laughs) bucks for the game and 11 bucks for the expansion pack. And Mm. then I'd have to learn how to drive. And I'm not doing that. You know what you could do instead? (laughs) You could just become a truck driver. Yeah, I could. Yeah, Yeah. there you go. (laughs) Get a dash cam. Yeah. Hope you have a great week full of leftover Easter candy. What's that? And leftover (laughs) Easter ham. What's that? (laughs) Remember to like, follow, and subscribe wherever you can, and we'll see you next week.